presents A Night of Black and Red. Welcome, we are live in downtown Hartford at the Bushnell Center for the Performing Arts for Hartford Hospital's signature fundraising event. Tonight, we celebrate a night of black and red. Good evening, I'm Jody Ambrosio. Good evening, I'm Rebecca Stewart, and welcome to a night of black and red. This is now the 27th year for the black and red, and this is so much more than a gala, more than a fundraiser. Tonight, we are looking to the future and celebrating the amazing past of Hartford Hospital hospital's cardiovascular care. We are raising more than a million dollars tonight for the Heart and Vascular Institute for treatment on the cutting edge and the latest technology. And here as you look around, we are surrounded by the very best of the best. These are the pioneers of cardiovascular care. And we are also raising awareness for something so important, hands-free CPR. Joe, did you know your heart beats more than 100,000 times each and every day? I did not know that till two seconds ago. And about over a lifetime, that's two and a half billion times that your heart's beating. So if something happens to your heart, you want the experts. No question about it, Rebecca. Now, someone in the United States has a heart attack every 34 seconds, and someone dies from heart disease every 60 seconds. Now, if someone collapses, would you know what to do? We, ordinary people, are often the first responders in the chain of survival. And tonight, you are going to hear so much about a very special and important community campaign, hands only, see PR. If you think someone's having a heart attack, first call 911, then start hands-only CPR. Push hard and fast in the center of the chest, 100 to 120 beats per minute. Now, a song can help you with the beat. Find your life-saving song at CPRLifesavers.org. Take our quiz, quiz, share it on Facebook, and tag a friend. We want you to do this. Now, you could save a life by knowing this. We both took the quiz, and I'm happy to tell you my life-saving song is one of my favorites, Can't Stop the Feeling by good old JT. I knew that it would be Justin Timberlake. Now, unlike high school, I passed my quiz. My life-saving song is Adventures in a Lifetime by Coldplay. Coldplay. Whatever artist you like, that could be a life-saving song. Hartford HealthCare's Tina Verona joins us now live, and I know you, too, have a life-saving song. Absolutely, Rebecca. Good evening to you and Joe. Well, my life-saving song is All About Tonight by Blake Shelton, and it really is All About Tonight for the Heart and Vascular Institute. So, what is your life-saving song at home? Log on to CPRLifesavers.org. Take the quiz. I promise you it takes less than a minute to know what your song is. And you never know. You may need it one day to save a life. Rebecca and Joe, I will send it back to you and we'll check in with you a bit later. All right. And later, Tina will sing that song. She doesn't know that. CPR can be the difference between life and death. Those minutes before you ever get to the hospital are so critical. Critical. You are three times more likely to survive a heart attack if somebody jumps in and performs CPR. And we have one woman's remarkable story. It's the little moments <laughs> that have the biggest impact. Every second is a blessing when you know how close you came to losing it all. You know, all the holidays, all the birthdays, they weren't as important as the little things every day. Mother's Day, 2014. Her family planned a special day. Oh, happy Mother's Day. But she had a nagging feeling something wasn't quite right. I started experiencing heartburn, and it was really bad. It was something different than I had ever felt before. She sat down and started and opened her presents. My husband noticed me rubbing my chest. She kept putting her hand to her chest as if she didn't feel well. And my dad asked, what's wrong? And he kept asking, are you OK, are you OK? She went to the bathroom to get an antacid. And we heard her go down. And he was yelling, Lee, Lee, are you OK? And then she still didn't answer, and he screamed, Lee. So I opened the door. My heart was pounding, and I was really scared. She was down and out. So I immediately called 911. Every moment mattered. Five minutes without a heartbeat could put her in serious danger of permanent brain damage. Lee's husband jumped into action. And then I perform started performing CPR on her until the paramedics got there. She was rushed to a nearby hospital, but Lee was in crisis. She needed more advanced care. Lifestyle. The family saw it rushing to Hartford Hospital, the Heart and Vascular Institute's tertiary care center. Everything moves very quickly. Cardiologist John Granquist was on call that Mother's Day. 
She was brought up to the cath lab. She had an urgent angiogram to define what the problem is. She had a very tight narrowing in one of her heart arteries. When the blood flow is cut off to the heart muscle because of the heart artery narrowing, you can develop an electrical problem called an arrhythmia. And the arrhythmia is what caused Lee's heart to stop. Hypothermia gets started right away. A remarkable procedure, induced hypothermia, would help save Lee's life lowering her body's core temperature for 24 hours. And what you're doing with the cooling is you're minimizing the chance for the brain having injury once you restore the blood flow. I remember her, the critical state that she was in. Sebi Galino, clinical leader on call that day, remembers a team that wouldn't give up. The sicker the patient, the more of us that come together, and you'll see a sea of blue and white. Rewarming her revealed another crisis, more arrhythmia. The team shocked her heart several times. You're flipping the electrical circuit breaker of the heart and you're uh, basically trying to make the dangerous heart rhythm go away and allow the normal heart rhythm to take back over. But it wasn't working. There was one solution. High risk, but this was the team that could make it happen. Fortunately, at Hartford Hospital, we have access to this procedure 24 hours a day because clearly in situations like Lee's, where you're having essentially a lethal arrhythmia, time is very important. Our interventional cardiology team was able to successfully fix the, and open the artery. They wouldn't know for sure if it worked until Lee woke up. I woke up four days later and people were smiling and happy and so thrilled to see me. All right. <laughs> Years would pass and Lee wanted a chance to thank the team that was there that day. Ethan, hi, Lee. I was, yeah, I was with you on that flight. Thank you very much. I, I know. No, glad to see you. Good to see everybody as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for getting me here safely. No problem. <laughs> I wanted to be able to say thank you <clears throat> for what you've done for me and my family. Not a day goes by that Lee doesn't think about what almost happened and cherish the little moments that mean the most. And that's one of the amazing things at Hartford Hospital is that they not only took care of me as the patient, they took care of my family. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's hard to put into words how much all of that means um, when you realize you almost lost it all. I get teary every time I see that. Lee Pichillo is with us. You are such an inspiration. We are so thrilled to have you here celebrating the team, celebrating you and the folks who saved your life. It is such an honor to meet you, Lee. You become such an advocate for CPR. Well, you know, it's really important. You never know when you are going to have to be the first line of defense and that first responder, because as much as we think we live in a small state or you live in a big city with a lot of ambulances around, it's those first minutes that matter the most. And hands-only CPR is so critical for everyone to learn and, and arm themselves with that. So amazing. Now you, have to, you can't get off the stage here without telling us your life-saving song, and I know you've done it. Well, it's Staying Alive is <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I have several that run through my head at different points. So <laughs> She does have to tell us that I have to tell you, be, her husband loves Rush, and she found a Rush song that would be specific for her husband, Tom. Thank you so much, Thank Lee. Much. We do want to remind all of you at home that you, too, can find a life-saving song. Yeah, remember that you can be a lifesaver. Head to CPRLifesavers.org org to take the quiz, sign up and take a class at Hartford Hospital and become certified in CPR. Now this year's beneficiary is the Heart and Vascular Institute, true pioneers in cardiac care. Now the state's first successful heart transplant, Joe, was here back in 1984. I am learning so much tonight, Rebecca. Hartford Hospital was also home to the state's first cath lab or catheterization lab back in the 1950s, paving the way for modern electrophysiology. Just think of it like an electrician for your heart. I like that phrase. Now this is a true destination center, an institute that can take care of every aspect of your heart and vascular system. Here you will find specialists and specialized programs that truly you will not find anywhere else. And all of those programs are because of the great vision and the great leadership behind it all. Joining us now are Bimal Patel, president of Hartford Hospital, and Jeffrey Flax, president and chief operating officer of Hartford Healthcare. And Jeff, we are starting with you 
tonight. Now, Hartford Hospital, we've talked so much, has this amazing history, but you are always looking forward. You really have an ambition. We truly have an ambition for the Heart and Vascular Institute to be amongst the nation's great centers. We are so blessed here in Connecticut to have tremendous physicians, incredible nurses, the level of innovation, the spirit of teamwork, and what they do, it's miraculous. And when I think back and we look at the community, why is it so important for a hospital, a healthcare system, to have this community campaign pushing CPR? It's what we are about at the heart of our mission is about serving our community, connecting with our community. And this is about health, wellness, prevention. The more we can engage people who live in the community around this, we will save lives. This is essential. You know I can't let you off the stage without asking you, what is your life-saving song? From Rocky, <laughs> Eye of the Tiger. I love it. I can hear that song. Okay, Bimmel Patel is next. All right, Bimmel Patel is the president of Hartford Hospital. Now, Bimmel, your grandfather had heart issues. You must feel very connected to this campaign. Absolutely. In 1981, a bystander helped him. Wow. And that gave him 18 years of extra life. I was in the seventh grade, and if I had not had that opportunity to grow up with him, I would not be the person I am today. So thanks to the bystander, by intervening in time and giving the life to him as an early start so that the clinical experts can help in the hospital setting. So it's a wonderful uh, personal gift to me and has stayed with me for lifelong. All right, Bimo, we've asked everybody this. Or also, you believe in this, and you were recently retrained, I heard from Rebecca, in CPR. Yes, I did. I went to our Center for Education, Simulation, Innovation, and my song is Staying Alive. <laughs> Good one. Just because so you and Jeff could do a duet? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, we will try. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Well, thank you, gentlemen. We appreciate you being here tonight. You. Now, if you think someone is having a heart attack, there are two important steps. Call 911 and then start hands-only CPR. Push hard and fast in the center of the chest, 100 to 120 beats per minute. And a song can help you get the beat. Find your life-saving song at CPRLifesavers.org. Take our quiz, share it on Facebook, tag a friend. I do not want to hear them sing again. I'll be really honest with you. <laughs> I want to hear them sing. We have the lovely Tina Verona, who has a very special story about a gentleman by the name of Larry Allen. And he knew he needed the best care and the help of one particular cardiologist at Hartford Hospital. Hospital. Tina Verona joins us live with this heartwarming story. Tina? Well, Joe, I know you know all too well it takes a tremendous amount of dedication to become a top athlete, and that's really Larry Allen. But he was also inspired by another top performer, sports cardiologist Dr. Paul Thompson. And it was that admiration that would prove to be serendipitous. There's nothing I'd like better than the seeing the four seasons unfold um, on foot running through a trail. It's a life on the run for Larry Allen, and he wouldn't have it any other way. At the end of a run, the endorphins are flying and you, you feel pretty good. Larry's dedication to the sport earned him a coveted spot in the main running hall of fame. Yet as he rose the ranks, he always kept pace with another top performer, sports cardiologist, Dr. Paul Thompson. His name as a, as a top class regional runner in New England uh, was always there and I was always impressed and it sort of, I just remembered it. Little did Larry know their paths would one day cross. On January 12th, 2016, while on a typical seven mile run, something was happening. Just didn't feel great running. An EKG revealed it was his heart. Larry had a, a condition that we call complete heart block, so it can be uh, quite serious in certain patients. Larry underwent emergency surgery in New York City, where doctors implanted a pacemaker. Following surgery, Larry felt better, but still wasn't able to run, and that was devastating. Larry found solace in his art. As the former director of publishing for the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, he knew he needed world-class care and a physician who understood his passion. And I couldn't find someone. And suddenly, suddenly the bell went off in my head one afternoon, um, and I remembered Dr. Thompson. Oh, oh, hi. How are you? Good to see you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you. Larry tracked down Dr. Thompson, who was now the co-physician-in-chief of the Hartford HealthCare Heart and Vascular Institute. It was a meeting years in the making, but now it was time to get Larry back on track. No matter whether they're 
um, a person as famous as Larry is and as good a runner, or they're just a kind of a jogger or whatever. We give them the absolute best we can so that they can return to the life they want to live. This is a wireless device. Dr. Thompson brought in Hartford Hospital electrophysiologist Dr. Stevens Weibel to take a closer look at Larry's pacemaker. They're very complex devices with multiple, almost infinite programming uh, possibilities. Dr. Zweibel was up for the challenge. I had a feeling there was something about how the pacemaker was programmed that was limiting his function. In this case, timing was everything. Uh, turning off that algorithm actually fixed his heart and uh, got him back to his normal state of running. It was quite a feat, yet the team at Hartford Hospital never gave up that Larry would one day run again. I committed to him that I would work with him for as long as it took to fix that problem and, and get him back to where he wanted to be. That's why it's fun to work with guys like Larry. I understand where they're coming from. I know what it's like to not be able to do what you want to do. Today, it's full speed ahead for Larry, all thanks to a promise Dr. Thompson made the day they finally met. He really embodies that spirit of, uh, yeah, you're going to live, but, but we want you to keep living. You know, I must say, when I was interviewing Dr. Swibel and Dr. Thompson for this story, it was so awe-inspiring to see their incredible determination to give Larry back his true passion of running, and Larry, who had all the faith in their ability to do so. Rebecca and Joe? You know, what a great story, and we are so fortunate. We have the chance now to introduce you to the co-physicians-in-chief of the Heart and Vascular Institute, Drs. Paul Thompson and Dr. Sabit Hashem. Now, Dr. Thompson, we're going to start with you because Larry Larry followed you because of this remarkable athletes program that you had created right here. But I want to ask you more about CPR. How important in your perspective is bystander CPR? Wow, bystander CPR is absolutely critical. And that's because for every minute that the heart is not working, you have a decrease of your chance of getting out of the hospital by 10%, getting out of the hospital neurologically intact. So if you wait five minutes, 50% of that chance is gone. So having somebody there that knows how to simply do hands only CPR is life saving and brain saving and you are reminding everybody out there listening tonight learn your life saving song what is yours I know you took the quiz staying alive I'm a Bee Gees guy I like it he sings it every now and then Dr. Hashem I bet you look good in the outfit in the day too doctor Dr. Sabat Hashem you had a recent study about replacing or repairing rather than replacing leaky mitral valves when is that an option uh, it is uh, an option when uh, the patient suffered a heart attack that causes a leaky valve and uh, a repair is still better than replacing that valve. I, it, no, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Well, the patient live, uh, they live longer and they have better quality of life also. And that's the most important thing. Now we know you have a life-saving song. Oh, well, I'm a heart surgeon, so I'm going to call it my way. <laughs> <laughs> and I your like patients it. are happy you do. Doctors, thank you so much. Now find your life-saving song at CPRLifesavers.org. Take our quiz, share it on Facebook, tag a friend. You can watch a step-by-step -step video of CPR there, too. All right, but first, we want to check back in with Tina Verona. She is live with some people who are making a difference every day at the Hartford Healthcare Heart and Vascular Institute. Tina? You got it, Joe. I am joined now by two women who really are the heart of the Heart and Vascular Institute. Institute. Vice President Marianne Karna and Director of Critical Care Nursing Michelle Colios. Marianne, I want to start with you. You were recruited about two years ago to really launch the Heart and Vascular Institute. As we celebrate the success of it all tonight, I think it's important for viewers to know what is an institute and more importantly, what does it mean for patients? Yeah, the institute is really an exciting opportunity for us to programmatically build a center of excellence and a destination for our cardiovascular patients in New England and beyond. So it gives us the ability to recruit top talent, that we'd focus on delivering quality outcomes that develop a superior experience uh, for our patients and our families. So we're very excited to be here tonight. And you have certainly done that. Michelle, I want to ask you, you uh, are taking care of the most critically ill, complex patients every single day. From a nursing perspective, what makes you most proud? 
We we are bringing in patients from across the state, Tina, and they are receiving the most complex therapies that are available in the state. But I am extremely proud that they work together as amazing members of the team and also never lose sight of the importance of the patient in the bed and the family and supporting them through the most trying times that individuals can have. They do amazing work here at Hartford Hospital. Truly unparalleled care. Now, before I let you both ladies go, I need to ask you, what is your CPR life-saving song, Marianne? Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger. Very good. And Michelle? I ended up with Justin Timberlake. You're like Rebecca. <laughs> I was. Ladies, thank you so much for all of the important and life-saving work that you do each and every day. Thank you. All right, well, you can find your life-saving song at CPRLifesavers.org. Take our quiz, share it on Facebook, tag a friend. You never know. You may just very well one day save a life. Rebecca and Joe? Thanks so much. We are live if you're just joining us at Hartford Hospital's signature fundraising event, a night of black and red. We are raising money for the destination program, the Heart and Vascular Institute, and we are raising awareness for hands-only CPR. And if you're just joining us, we want to know where you've been. We are <laughs> delighted to be joined by the mayor of the great city of Hartford, Luke Bronin. Mayor, what does a night like this bring to the community of Hartford? Well, first of all, good to be with you, and thanks for having me. Look, this is a great night when it really highlights the fact that uh, Hartford Hospital is becoming a real destination hospital where both patients and physicians are coming from around the country to get world-class medical care you know and of course tonight we're highlighting the the heart and vascular uh, uh, center and the incredible uh, medical professionals there but Hartford Hospital is doing incredible work from their bone and joint center and so many other places and uh, we're fortunate to have a great hospital that's increasingly a center of excellence here in Hartford oh. now we know you're busy but do you have a heart saving song of course he does uh, life saving songs well you know when you're trying to save a life it seems like uh, staying alive is probably the, <laughs> the best song I could think of, and it's got a good beat. I think it's a runaway winner. Mayor, always an honor to be with you. Great to be with you. Have a good night. Thank right. you so much. Thanks, Mayor. Now, find your life-saving song at CPRLifesavers.org. Take the quiz, share it on Facebook, and tag a friend. Let us head back out to Tina Verona, who is live and very busy, to tell us about some of the fundraising efforts. Tina? Oh, we are very busy, Joe. I am here with an incredible group of women. Look at all of these beautiful women from the Hartford Hospital Auxiliary who really put the heart in in Hartford Hospital thanks to their support and dedication and tremendous fundraising efforts for the entire hospital. Amy Steinberg is the co-president of the Auxiliary. Amy, tell us uh, about the recent projects that you have funded for the Heart and Vascular Institute and also for a life-saving device that you recently purchased. The Hartford Hospital Auxiliary is, uh, we send all of our money that we raise, we give right back to the hospital and one way we do this is through our special projects. A recent project was the Lucas CPR device. It is a device that is used for patients who are going or in cardiac arrest. The device is placed around their chest, and it takes the place of the manual chest compressions. Manual chest compressions are exhausting after one or two minutes, so the Lucas provides the consistent um, compressions and provides the steady and necessary um, oxygen to the brain and heart for the patient. Yeah, now we've been talking about hands-only CPR, but this is hands-free CPR, so this is wonderful, tremendous. So I I can't let all of you ladies go. Before I ask you what your CPR life-saving song is, Amy, we'll start with you. Mine's Dancing Queen. Oh, Dancing Queen. That's a new one tonight. <laughs> I have the tiger. Right, nice. Well, Staying alive. Staying alive. I have the tiger, too. All right. A lot of I have the tigers, but uh, I like yours. That's original. All right, Joe and Rebecca, we're having a lot of fun over here with these ladies. We're going to send it back over to you in the Belding Theater. All right. I think we have a great mixtape, if I date myself. Thank you, Tina. Each and every day, the heroes here inside the Heart and Vascular Institute save lives and families going above and beyond offering leading edge technology. We have one family so very thankful for their second chance. When Mikhailo Teroletsky turned 60 years old this year, he was in an unlikely place to celebrate, Hartford Hospital. Back home, it would be end of story because he, will, he wouldn't survive. It was an ordinary day when daughter Natalia got the call from her father. He didn't feel well. The pain progressed, becoming unbearable. When I asked, he was ready. He said, please, and he was like screaming, please call now. Inside his abdomen, a ticking time bomb he never knew about. An aortic aneurysm that was slowly bleeding and about to rupture, a rupture that could cause death in minutes. We were ready to walk out and the burst, uh, his aorta burst. Dr. Thomas de Vinagracia led a six hour surgery and never gave up. But that night it was, he was in his hands. It was between 
death or life in minutes. And he saved him. So a lot of those patients that become symptomatic uh, have probably a, a slow leak or a, kind of a minor rupture. Uh, and that's probably what he was experiencing initially. And then it ruptured to a greater extent and he became more symptomatic and his blood pressure dropped when we encountered him in the emergency room. Dr. Divinograsso, which is such an amazing doctor. Um, and he will be, he just, he will be forever his angel. He's saying, just to be short and say in one sentence, he really appreciates life and beautiful people in it, like his doctors. It's one of those things that makes all the sacrifices that you make uh, worth it, because you see that you touch people in a very special way. Now, this is a night that has brought many dignitaries here to the, to the Bush Hill. Absolutely, celebrating the Heart and Vascular Institute at Hartford Hospital. And Tina Verona, I recognize someone special with you tonight. You do. Rebecca, I am here with U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. You have always been a strong supporter of Hartford Hospital, and we have partnered with you on many different important health care topics. What does tonight specifically mean for the state of Connecticut? What it really means for the people of the state is to support and acclaim one of the great health institutions in the whole United States. It gives us an opportunity to show our pride, but also to give back to a hospital that is continually giving to us and to emphasize the importance of preventive medicine, which can save lives and dollars, heart and vascular. One of the killers if it is untreated before it reaches a really costly and devastating stage. So I'm really proud to be here. I talk about Hartford Hospital all the time when I'm in Washington, D.C. as an example of public service, great skill and dedication from the community, the auxiliary, as well as the staff. And we are certainly proud to have you here. And I'm curious, what is your CPR life savings song? Staying alive, the Bee Gees. Bee Gees, I love it. Always a pleasure, Senator Thank Blumenthal. You. Thank you so much. Well, Joe and Rebecca, that will do it from here. We still have some guests making their way inside to enjoy a truly spectacular evening on tap. We'll send it back to you in the Belding Theater. All right, Tina, terrific job as always. Now, this is a very special night, perhaps especially for this gentleman, Hartford House, mm -hmm. Hartford Healthcare CEO Elliot Joseph, who's celebrating 10 years at CES CEO this year. Oh, you have brought a decade of transformation to the area, elevating Hartford Hospital, elevating Hartford Health Care. And people need to know, why is a system of care so important to you? Yeah, thank you, Rebecca and Joe. It's great to be here with you. What a great night. Um, what's special about what we're doing here is this is about the Cardiovascular Institute at Hartford Hospital, but it's bigger than that. What we've built while we put Hartford Health Care together and on the map is a fully comprehensive system of care. That means whether you've had an open heart surgery, a TAVR, one of the more sophisticated procedures we do in the operating room at Hartford Hospital, you need home care through Hartford Healthcare Home Care, behavioral health, our behavioral health network. We have put together an entire system of services to take care of the continuum of care and provide holistic care for all your needs that are based on the fact that you're coming, you're usually being transitioned out of very serious care in a hospital that does remarkably complex surgery. Earlier, people have chosen to donate because they really believe in this mission. Yes, they do. And I am so heartened in an event like this, in a night like this, you see we have about 1,200 people here tonight. These people love the hospital. They're devoted to the hospital. They support the hospital. They're here tonight to have a good time. But they're they're all, including myself, we are grateful that Hartford Hospital is in our community. Excellent. And we can't let you leave without you telling us your life-saving song. Well, I think I have one that hits it out of the park because it's both got a great beat and the title can't, it's perfect. Tell which us. Is the Bee Gees, Staying Alive. That's a good one. That's a good one. I think that's the winner. I think I it think is. that's the winner in the clubhouse tonight. <laughs> Absolutely. We want to thank all of the amazing teams who really save lives and families at the Heart and Vascular Institute at Hartford Hospital. And thank you so much for celebrating a night of black and red with us. We will see you soon. Good night.